Greetings and welcome to the discussion on web browsers and web servers. My name is Dan McElroy at San Jose City College. If you have been using a web browser such as Safari, Chrome, Firefox, or Edge for a while, you will find that you probably know some of the information contained in this discussion. Hopefully, everyone will find some new and exciting things that they didn't already know about web browsers and web servers. The information in this presentation contains some material from Wikipedia and things I have written myself. The internet is used to connect a web browser to the web server. When you type an address in the web browser, your request is routed to a web server through the internet. The server gets your request, does something with it, such as finding a web page, and then sends that page back to be displayed on your browser. Programs called hyperlinked applications were written during the mid and late 1980s. Research papers typically have footnotes that identify where the writer referenced information described in the paper. That way, the reader could locate the information that was referenced. Eventually, research papers were stored on disk files instead of being printed out. A hyperlink in the footnote could be clicked and the material being referenced would then be automatically displayed on the computer screen. The reader of the research paper no longer needed to find that material by searching the rows of books in the library. Following hyperlinked applications, Tim Berners-Lee is credited with developing both the first web server and the first web browser in 1990. It was called World Wide Web no spaces, and later renamed Nexus. Many other browsers were developed with Mark Anderson's 1993 Mosaic, which was later called Netscape. It was easy to use and install and often credited with sparking the internet boom of the 1990s. Today, the major web browsers are Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, Edge, Firefox, Opera, and Silk. The explosion and popularity of the web was triggered in September 1993 by Mosaic that included images and text on the same page. Its founder also established the company that in 1994 released Netscape Navigator. This resulted in one of the early browser wars in competition with Microsoft's Internet Explorer for Windows. Netscape began to threaten the very existence of Microsoft. Microsoft retaliated by giving Internet Explorer away for free. This caused Netscape to lose most of its income from the sale of Netscape Navigator. Tim Berners-Lee was named in Time Magazine's list of the 100 most important people of the 20th century. He is honored as the inventor of the World Wide Web and the first web browser. The Uniform Resource Locator, or URL, contains the full address that is used to locate a web page on the Internet. Although it typically starts with HTTP colon slash slash or HTTPS colon slash slash, this part of the URL is assumed when using a web browser. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Hypertext indicates that the page can contain links that can be clicked to move to another page. Protocol is a list of rules that are followed when routing a request around the Internet. There are several other Internet protocols not discussed here, such as FTP, File Transfer Protocol. The URL contains several parts. The first part is the name of the server. In this example, program-info.net. There is an optional list of folders on the web server to find the location of the web page. Lastly, the name of the web page itself. In this example, it is samplewebpage.htm. Most web pages will use .htm or .html as their file extension. If a web page is not specified, the server usually looks for a file named default.htm or index.htm or either of these names with the .html file extension. If you want to type this address on your browser, be careful and type the capitalization exactly as shown because this server is running the Linux operating system. Capitalization does not matter on servers that are running Microsoft. 
Here is another thing to notice. The URL uses the forward slash to separate each part of the web page address. This is true even for servers that are running on Microsoft, which typically uses the backslash character to separate different parts of the folder and file name. The original top-level domain names were .com, .mil, .edu, .net, and .org. The top-level domain helps identify the type of web server. Recently, additional names have been added to the list, such as .biz, .travel, etc. A two-digit suffix can be added to the end of the domain name to identify the country. .us is for the United States of America. .ca is for Canada. .mx for Mexico. .au for Australia. And the list goes on to cover the many countries in the world. There are several million devices on the Internet. The Internet is a collection of many interconnected networks. The way data is transferred from one device to another is called packet switching. Small pieces of data are transferred across the Internet to allow for faster and more efficient transfer across the several devices which make up the Internet. Each device on the Internet is given its own address, called an IP address. Connecting one device to another is similar to making a telephone call using the telephone number. Each packet of data contains both the TO IP and the FROM IP address. The server receives the IP address of your device and is able to send data back to it. There will be more discussion on how the Internet works in a later discussion. You can find the IP address of your computer or the IP address of any server on the Internet by going to the command prompt on your computer. Type in the ipconfig command at the command prompt to get the IP address of your machine. Type the ping command at the command prompt to get the IP address of a server on the Internet. For example, to find the IP address of Google.com, type ping Google.com. Although originally you needed to know the numeric address of the other device you wanted to connect to, we now have names for the servers. When Google.com is entered on the address bar of the web browser, Google.com needs to be converted into an IP address. This is done by a domain name server, DNS. As new servers are added to the Internet, their names and addresses are added to the domain name servers. Here is a web page on program-info.net. When we look closely at the web page, we see the title is displayed in the Operating Systems Windows tab. The URL is in the web browser's address bar. The contents of the web page is placed in its body. It is using a heading level 1 at the top of the page. The next line has a size change to make it bigger and it is bold. An image is placed on the web page along with a lot of text. A link to the San Jose City College web page is near the bottom of this web page. Now, here comes the big question. What goes on behind the scenes to display a web page on your browser? On the server, a web page is built using Hypertext Markup Language, or HTML. The HTML file contains only text characters. Here is the HTML file that produces the web page displayed on the left. It contains several tags that control how the web page is built. Tags are enclosed in angle brackets. Most tags are grouped into pairs. I can see the open angle bracket HTML close angle bracket tag at the top of the file that identifies the start of the HTML document. At the end is the closing tag open angle bracket slash HTML close angle bracket that identifies the end of the web page. For this web page, I see the head tag and the slash head tags enclose the title and slash title tags. The text within the title tag is displayed on the window title on Windows, Mac OS, or whatever operating system you are using. The body tag also contains the background color attribute BG color and text color. The three primary colors for light are red, green, and blue, as opposed to the primary colors for paint of red, yellow, and blue. 
The color attribute is expressed as two hexadecimal digits, each for the amount of red, green, and blue light for each color, where zero zero equals a zero and, and FF represents the maximum value for that color. For example, pound sign FF 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 represents white. Pound sign zero 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 represents black. Pound sign FF zero 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 gives red. Pound sign zero zero FF zero zero gives green, and pound sign zero 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 FF gives blue. Pound sign eight zero eight zero eight zero gives gray. There will be a separate presentation on hexadecimal values. The H1 tag is part of a group of header tags, H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6, that can be used to organize a large amount of text into separate sections and make it easier to search for sections of a larger document. The H1 tag causes the text to be displayed bigger. The font tag can be used to change the actual font or even change the size of the text within the font and slash font tags. The IMG tag contains attributes that identify the source of the image, size, and others. The alt attribute is important for two reasons. It contains text that is displayed if the picture file can't be found, and it is also there for screen readers used by blind or people with low vision. The text has BR tags, which are used as line breaks to move text down to the next line. The BR tag does not have a closing tag like many of the other tags. Sometimes the BR tag is shown as open angle bracket BR space slash close angle bracket. An alternate to the BR tag is the P paragraph tag, which gives a blank line before a paragraph. P tag also has a closing tag slash P. The open angle bracket A close angle bracket is an anchor that usually has the href attribute to provide a link to another web page. The A tag has two parts when used to create a link. The href attribute inside the open angle bracket A provides the link address where to go if the link is clicked. Between the A and the slash A tags is where the text is provided that gets displayed on the web page for the link. Although there are many more HTML tags than shown, here is a list of the most common tags with a brief description. Most of them have already been used in the sample web page. In many cases, the web page sends a request to the server. The server then runs a program that builds the response page and sends it back to the user's web browser. However, a small program can be included inside the return web page, which is executed on the user's computer. A JavaScript program can be placed inside the header of a web page. In this example, the function compute open parentheses, close parentheses is executed when the user clicks the calculate button. The form being displayed is built inside the body and the slash body tags. This sample JavaScript program computes a weekly paycheck from within the web page. What is most important to recognize that this program is sent by the server that is to be run on the user's machine. JavaScript is one of the more popular and better paying programming languages. As a side note, there is also a programming language called Java that is used on actual web servers. You need to remember that JavaScript runs within a web page not a server. Although the word Java is in the name of both languages, they are completely different programming languages. The save command is one of the things that has messed me up more than a few times. I'm used to using Control S on the PC or Command S on a Mac OS system to do a save, which saves the actual web page on my computer. But what I wanted to do was send the data I filled out on the web page to the server. Make sure that you click the button shown as either Submit or Save to send data back to the server. Cookies are small text files a website may place on your computer or device when you visit. Cookies help the website to recognize your device the next time you visit. Cookies serve many functions. For example, they can help a company remember your username and preferences, analyze how well sites are performing, or allow them to recommend content they believe will be most relevant to you. The majority of websites 
use cookies to collect and retain personal information about their visitors. Most cookies collect general information, such as how visitors arrived at and use a site, a device they are using, their IP address, which pages are being viewed, and their approximate physical location, such as city, state, or country. Cookies can be used to monitor website performance, remember your preferences, or customize advertising campaigns based on what you have looked at before. For more information about cookies and how to manage them, visit www.allaboutcookies.org. Typically, data is routed through six to eight different computers as it passes between the browser and the server. This has provided hackers the opportunity to capture and save sensitive data such as bank or payment information. This is sometimes referred to as the man in the middle attack. Now, most web traffic uses the HTTPS protocol where the S stands for secure. Communications are encrypted using transport layer security, TLS. The protocol is referred to as HTTP over TLS or just HTTPS. Depending on how much room is in the web browser's address bar, it will either display the URL starting with HTTP colon slash slash or HTTPS colon slash slash. The symbol of a closed lock is also used to indicate that the web communication is encrypted. Another way of hiding your communications is through a virtual private network. The VPN connects your computer to a server on the internet using the VPN's connection. For example, if the VPN server is in another country, it will appear that you are coming from that country instead of where you actually are. This can also be helpful if you are connecting to the internet through a public Wi-Fi. VPNs are used by many companies when employees are working from home. The VPN can make it appear that the employees are actually using a computer located at the company when really they could be many miles away. You may want to check some articles on the web about the advantages of using a VPN if you are on a shared Wi-Fi or student network. Most network connected computers keep a history and a log file to keep track of the communications that have occurred. These log files are very important when technicians need to find out what went wrong when the network is not working. One time a student wanted to get his girlfriend out of a cosmetology class early, so he created a fake email address, drdoom2 at hotmail.com, without using his real name, and sent a bomb threat to the college. He was successful in his date. However, when the police contacted Microsoft, they were able to see that the email was sent from an IP address at the college. The technicians at the college were able to use that IP address to identify the actual computer. It was in one of the open labs. Police asked the lab supervisor if they could identify who was sitting at the computer when the email was sent. They said, oh yeah, he sits there most of the day. To make a long story short, oh, I don't know what happened to him, but he wasn't seen on campus after that. Most browsers have a private or incognito mode that prevents any browsing history from being saved by the browser. However, this doesn't stop things from being logged by the server. Be careful of a sense of false security. I could probably go on for a couple hours talking about the web and web pages, but I need to stop somewhere. I will have another discussion that covers more detail on how the internet works. If you are really interested in creating web pages, look for a class on web design. Bye for now.